Yeah, yeah just a lot of acid right down here. here. We have just officially cleared out of St. Martin. You learning how to steer? crazy few weeks. Flew to St. Martin, sold our business, bought the boat, and now it's time to go get it. Backpack? Check. In preparation to set sail, we enlist a rigging specialist to do a thorough rig inspection and a boat technician to go over the electrical and mechanical systems. Alright, there's the engine battery. Follow it down. Alright, start. Uh, starboard? Starboard? You got it. Nothing? No. You're going down to 5 volts. This is not, this is nowhere near. This is about uh, 85. Okay, so we'll switch that. Yeah, so that one is a... Yeah, is just it? a lot of acid right down here. here. Yep. So, there we go. It's this thing on the duck. Yep. I'll go and switch it to one and see if it's still charging. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, on one it's not charging the starter right. battery. Right, yeah. But, I mean, that's not a problem because you only use the starter battery to start the engine. I mean, it's not using but any... But if you're sitting on here using one all the time to, to, to keep the starter engine separate, it's not charging if you have the house battery sitting on one. You have to go one and two. And then yeah. if we go to one and two, is that draining that? We also hire a captain and a crew member to help us with our maiden voyage. This was a requirement for our insurance policy. Okay, let's go to one and two. Now it's charging uh, three amps. Right. It's dividing the, the, the charge over okay. the two banks. So, so you're comfortable with that? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. All right, good. It's not taking any amps if you leave it so, on one. It's okay, not... so where should we keep this if we're sailing? One and two. One and two. Yeah. Okay. Because the, the everything will be charging. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. Exactly. Yeah. So now we put it on two. And we stop that engine. We check the other one. Okay. Yeah. Steady sixty amps. Yeah, that's good. All right. I'm happy. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Shut her down. Yeah. Well, that should give you everything you need to get it documented. Awesome. <laughs> when the work was done, we managed to get to the popular cruisers hangout Lagoonies for some food and drink before we set sail the next day. So finally setting off and it's raining. After what, three days of completely perfect weather? Yes. Or, well, at least not raining. <laughs> What's what time is it? It is about twenty one minutes out. Okay, so we got like nine minutes till ten minutes. With the drawbridge finally open. We make our way out of the lagoon and out to open water. We have just officially cleared out of St. Martin. We are headed home to North Carolina. We Cap had to convince the customs and immigration people that we were okay because we hardly had any of the right paperwork for the boat, for the sale, the registration from another country, and when they were here last, and the left last, and all these other things they wanted documents of, and we didn't have any of it, so they finally let us go. Next stop, Moorhead City. 
We chose an offshore route instead of hugging the coast. Not only is it shorter and more direct, but the weather forecast at the time indicated that the offshore route would have much better weather than closer to land. This is our first voyage out to sea on our new boat. And Drew had a turn at the helm, so he knows how to steer the boat now. And we'll see who's at the helm right now. You learning how to steer? Yeah. How fast are we going? schedule it's not long before we are greeted by a pod of dolphins they stayed with us for over half an hour it was an awesome sight and quite emotional as it was our first real chance to reflect on the long road to get to this day as well as the unknowns of the new life we were about to begin Sails filled and trimmed nicely, and the wind at a nearly perfect speed and direction, we were well on our way. Steering the boat towards uh, Washington, well, actually Morehead City, North Carolina, so we can get her fixed up and enjoy the rest of our lives. So I'm just about to begin my, all right, just started my first shift of the night watch. Got another one coming up at 2.30 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. And then uh, back at 10, I think, a.m. So, so three hours. Three hours. Alternating. Yep. It's not too bad. It sounds kind of rough. But you get to sleep during the day. During the day, we all take turns. We don't necessarily stick to the schedule. The wind tended to increase just after dark, so we reefed the mainsail every night just before sunset. This was a rule we put in place on the second day. If we had been able to get any footage of reefing after dark on the first night, it would definitely either be not safe for work or have more beeps than a forklift in reverse. It's just so much easier and safer to do during daylight. The camera perspective is deceiving, but keep an eye on the horizon to get an idea of just how much the boat is moving up and down with the waves. And these are considered good offshore conditions. Our rig is set up with a traditional reefing system, which requires that someone must go forward to the mast. This is common on cruising sailboats, but it is something we would investigate changing during our refit. Speaking of nighttime, sailing at night is equal measures of peace, exhilaration, and sheer terror. We were lucky to have a bright moon for the first few nights. After that, the nights were pitch dark. There are few things that align you with your place in the universe than sailing hundreds of miles offshore in the dark of night. Once you accept this, you learn to trust your boat, your instruments, and your faith because you know at least one of these won't let you down. For the first four days, we had almost ideal sailing conditions. On the fifth and sixth day, when the winds died down and we started the engines, the gremlins came to life. Our starboard engine, in particular, began sounding intermittent alarms for temperature and oil pressure, wild tachometer readings, 
shutting down spontaneously and even failing to shut down when the ignition was turned off. It took us a while to find the problem. And this may cure a few of our problems up. Holy shit, how could that have that bad? Yeah, how did it even run it off? Having Dave on board was a tremendous help with his experience sailing and fixing things on boats. So it looked like that was chafing probably on there. And yeah. Cause that. I'm sure. Right now, but we'll keep it up off of there so it doesn't happen again. Keepers. It's amazing they can make it this far out. So this is our uh, sixth day at sea and we have been becalmed. Uh, we have real muggy, almost wants to rain, kind of still skies. It's been a little, been a little tough. We uh, have brought down both sails and we have to motor for a while. So on a day like today, what do you do but play? Cards. So, Bill, are you winning for I'm once? Winning for once because you're not playing. It's my only chance. Dave, are they taking you for money? I got my sunglasses on. <laughs> I can't see all my expressions. He's got his poker so, face on. Poker face on. Exactly. Here's Drew uh, rearranging the cards in a fashion that will suit him. He's gonna he's gonna win the next hand maybe. I don't know. So they're playing um, rummy. Canadian rules rummy. <laughs> and the Americans have beaten the Canadians' ass. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look around. Everything at this point is just kind of damp, wet. And as you can see, a whole lot of nothing going on out there. Sort of wish it would rain and get itself over with. So this is a little bitty flying fish that was on our deck. Ah, oh, he's small. Mm, tasty. <laughs> okay, little birdie, fly! Rescue! <laughs> See, we rehab them and return them to the wild. <laughs> what can we say, right? Damn the rains, Cam. So after fixing the engine, how, the third, fourth time? Yeah, seventh or eighth time. Seventh, eighth. Yeah. There's the engine doctor. We're all funny with <laughs> um, They're still playing cards. He does when the engine overheats because he's cool as a cucumber. Right. <laughs> and it has started raining. So we have put down. This is the guy that's cool as a cucumber right here. I'm on the inside. Alright. Alright, and Captain Rick has gotten the weather report. And uh, he is okay. determined we will make it to Moorhead City sometime. <laughs> On the next leg of Sailing SV Caterpillar, 
Where are you? Middle of nowhere. Big blue ocean. We jump in to check our sail drives and propellers. There's another flying fish up on our deck. Uh, a little storm. Dodge some storms and cross the infamous Gulf Stream current as we try to make landfall at our intended destination. Gonna crawl around the world. Thanks for watching. Do us a favor and subscribe to our channel, click the thumbs up button, and leave a comment down below. And remember, on SV Caterpillar, we take it one leg at a time.